China's More Threads MTT S60 GPU supports DirectX and can run League of Legends. I sure hope it can run League of Legends. Look, we got to cover the GPU news. Do I think these are going to go anywhere? I'm not really sure. I don't like the memory that's currently going to be uh, available on it that we have confirmed. We'll talk about that. But Intel Arc DGPU launch was not the only important event today. In China, the first fully domestic graphics architecture has just been presented. More Threads has only been established 18 months ago. In 2021, the company announced it is developing a fully featured graphics processor. To say the least, it was hard to believe that such a young company would achieve what many companies were unable to do for years, to bring their own GPU to market in such a short time. Now, when we look at the performance of these GPUs, it is super important to point out how impressive it is to stand this up and have something ready to go regardless of how weak it is in power comparison to NVIDIA or AMD or Intel. Because look, they have like almost time, almost no time here and they're actually coming out with something that works. That alone is impressive. I will give them that, right? The company is led by Zhang Jing Zong, Jing, Jing, Jing Hong. Oh, Lordy, I bet you guys love listening to me try to pronounce names. Who is a former global vice president and general manager for NVIDIA. With this 15 years of experience in the graphics market and a very good support from experienced team and partners, his company today presented its first graphics card for gaming and servers. More Threads today revealed its MTT S60 and MTS 2000 desktop GPUs. Those are made in 12 nanometer process technology and are designed using the using Musa, which is short for MT Unified System Architecture, MUSA. According to the company, the S60 offers six teraflops of power, while S2000 is 12 teraflops of power. The former is equipped with eight gigabytes of LPG DDR4X memory, which is where I'm a little disappointed in, at least from the mining perspective, it's not that good. But we don't know yet what the latter is, the MTS 2000, other than the quantity, which is 32 gigabytes. If we can at least get GDDR6, then we're talking. Then we're, then we're really interested in this as miners, right? So right now, though, it's looking like, obviously, the budget for the gamers is going to be super interesting, especially since really like in smaller markets... No, not even smaller markets. Let's just say Eastern markets where basically esports is a big thing. A very cheap solution for these esports makes a lot of sense, right? Especially along the lines of League of Legends. So you know where their targeting is going to be. It's not going to be AAA gaming and Cyberpunk 2077. It's going to be League of Legends, it's going to be Valorant, it's going to be CSGO. That's what they're aiming this at, from the best I can tell. The most important news from the conference is that Musa architecture supports DirectX runtime, a feature that was missing from all previously announced and demoed Chinese GPUs. Furthermore, Musa supports OpenCL, OpenGL, Vulkan, and even NVIDIA CUDA. What is also interesting is, uh, that today Intel has launched its Arc DG2 GPUs as the first consumer GPUs with AV1 encoding capability. As it turns out, Musa GPUs also have support uh, for encoding and decoding in this format. The graphics card was demoed in a League of Legends game at 1080p resolutions. Unfortunately, no further details were discussed. It should be commented upon that the game is not very demanding. It can be run even with a DirectX 10 capable GPU. The game's official recommended specs list is the GTX 560 or the Radeon HD 6950. Pretty old cards there. And then we have specifications here. FP32 cores on the MTS60 is 2048. You basically double that on the S2000. The performance is 6 teraflops on the S60 and 12 teraflops. We already talked about that. The memory is where we're really trying to figure out what's going on. Is it going to be 32 gigabytes of GDDR6? I kind of am doubting it. Why would you have 
only double the size of the GPU core on the bigger model, but then have GDDR6 and a massive 32 gigabytes of it, I wouldn't know. So I'm leaning towards something else that's going to be slower, but then just more of it. We'll have to wait and see. And then the OS support and display port and blah, blah, blah. Now the fan technology here is going to be interesting because you have a single slot blower on the MTS 60 while you have a passive single slot on the MT, uh, MTTS 2000. You would think that you would stick with the blower if it's a single slot, but uh, we'll just have to see what the design looks like at the end of the day. It, I mean, up here is what you can see. This one definitely doesn't make a, I guess it's fully passive, no fan or anything. So to me, it sounds like this is a data center GPU and I'm wondering what their applications are going to be for. While this one may be like low level land center in South Korea to play League of Legends, right? That's kind of what I'm getting from this as far as target markets. Let me know what you think in the comment section below as well as the chat. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.